Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Astrology Victoria today with your host, Tatiana. Again, Dulcie won't be joining us for a while. She's taking a break, but uh, I'm here to give you this astrology, uh, this week's astrology. And uh, go on, keeping on with the themes that we have been keeping on from last week. So everything's kind of bleeding on and there's new energies coming in. So let's just dive in right into our week's astrology. So this week, um, and we see here, we have our first. Oh, so we have this, um, the sun is conjuncting Mercury and Chiron in Aries. So what happens when we have the sun and Mercury? Our communication can be very lively. There could be many new ideas. Great time to launch things, to talk about new projects, new uh, new ideas. It's, it's um, you know, Aries has this, initiation energy it's like let's do this and with mercury there is like we're talking about it it's a bright cheerful person um type of of you know like bright communication to the to the point excited you know there's some kind of excitement however with chiron there then we have the opportunity to see what has been stopping us or what could be the fear to take action or is taking action or something that will bring some kind of painful memory or it is, is it like new ideas for new things could bring up fear of going after what we actually want and desire. So with Chiron in the mix, there could be, with the sun there, there could be this light literally shining on what's painful. So there's also the opportunity to talk about or to uncover possible wounding so it can be revealed and exposed. And again, it's more difficult with anybody with placements around you know, uh, the 12th to 14th degree, or even like the 10th to 15th degree of Aries, Libra, um, uh, Aries, Libra, Cancer, and Capricorn. So the mm, cardinal signs might be feeling this energy much more as a challenge. Um, and uh, so it's, it's good to... Um, to not be, um, let's say, impulsive, even though ideas could flow very fast, we could be wanting to take action very quickly or talk again very brightly about some new project. So yes, it's good to be in this initiation energy. However, with Chiron there, the only way to initiate something is to go past the, the, the feeling of of why, why I could be scared of taking a leap of faith or doing something new that it's more meaningful. Again, this is, this is not like the easiest week per se because of, of that particular conjunction. And also because we still have uh, Saturn, it's now conjuncting also Mars and we're having uh, you know, a little certain difficulties um, uh, around there. So yeah, kicking off with, uh, on Monday, we have this conjunction with Mercury. Uh, okay, good time to talk about, you know, why am I scared of taking action and going after what I want? That's a good time to maybe reveal that if on a positive note. Um, simul so simultaneously, we have now Sun conjuncting Saturn. The sun, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Mars conjunct Saturn. Venus is luckily already moving away from Saturn. So that will start giving us a little breather from this maybe relationship uh, or money. You know, it could be money, value, relationship, difficulties, where we have to take stock of reality and reality checks, integrity, integrity in relationships, 
all of that. As Venus moves away from Saturn, we might find that it's a little bit easier. Maybe pleasure can start coming back. <laughs> you know, maybe a, a little bit of, of the sobering effects of Saturn on what we want, what we desire, what we love might start like easing, easing out as easing off as Venus moves away. So, uh, but Mars now is in conjunction. So what comes after this is like anything we also want to initiate seems to be stopped in its tracks. There seems to be like, okay, I wanna do these things, but <gasps> there's this like, you know, like static bicycle kind of feeling like, you're like pedaling super fast, but it's not going anywhere. <laughs> That's the feeling. I, I get this idea. Uh, at some point, I, I had somebody that has a natal Saturn, uh, Mars Saturn, uh, I think in Aries. But anyway, they're like, as they're a spin, they're a spin coach. And it's very interesting to see how that energy gets reflected into like, spinning it just spin 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 but it goes nowhere so the energy is like almost not moving so this is the sensation that maybe the smart saturn could bring and again especially it might be difficult for anybody with placements in aquarius uh leo taurus and scorpio around the, the 22nd degree and not to mention that again we still have the square of Mars Saturn that we discussed last week still squaring the notes and now more exact. So this is this sobering time of it could feel like there's a, a non-action with Mars like uh, being stopped in its tracks or ideas and then this reality check going backwards forwards you know or what needs to integrate where have we not been responsible with relationships or have we not been responsible with action with our you know all the Aquarian themes so basically our, our the society as well like our community so it's bringing up this this Saturn always brings up the question have you matured are you oh Neptune are you mature are you um uh have you taken responsibility in this area of your life like, have you taken stock of this? So wherever you have Aquarius in your chart, pay attention because this whole past weeks have been about that, being conscious of the give and the take of where we're putting our efforts and, ener and energy into creating structures that function into being responsible with our own uh, reactions of again yin yang give take and how to move also forward towards maybe there, there might be a difficulty into moving into something more peaceful more serene like the taurus here right this this energy rule taurus is ruled by venus so we might be wanting to move into something that's more slow steady uh pleasurable solid but then there's this other side. Again, are we still attached to drama, to pain, to difficulty, to codependency? So Saturn is, is, is literally in this position asking us to be responsible. And at the same time, we want to move forward and leave something behind. And it feels like it's almost not possible that something's blocking it, that that's that Saturn. And with Mars, even though we might have all these ideas and great, great, you know, beginnings that we want to start something, there's like, no, you have to do it right. You have to do it well. Are you being responsible? You know, <laughs> ah, so these are energies that may come up in your field at this moment. And um, the best way to deal with this energy is to be patient because impatience with a very like stressed Mars that wants to go for something. Impulsivity might not be either the best solution. It's like just one foot in front of the other, like Saturn says, you know, one thing in front of the other, you know, what am I being responsible for? How am I making responsible choices and responsible action? So Mars and Saturn can also be very focused action. This is on the most, in the positive side of Mars-Saturn, we have the capacity to be 
very focused, slow and steady, slow and steady. That is the best way to take to take Mars and Saturn together. It's slow and steady and, and, and go for it. It's like getting at it, getting at it instead of wasting Mars's energy that is like, I want to go, you know, and in these Aquarian themes is what are we um, bringing again? What are we, what action, because Mars is action, are we bringing into creating these new structures that we want to create, create for ourselves? So this is action, but this is slow and steady action. It's not fast, impulsive, crazy, slow and steady. Um, again, uh, there could be with uh, the, the Mars conjunct Saturn also goes for the whole week. So this week, take it easy, take it easy. No rush, please, no rush, easy. Otherwise you might feel that there's a roadblock. The more you wanna rush into something, the more you will feel the, the block. So like, just take it easy. That's, that's my two cents on that. And then moving on, so we have this conjunction that we've been talking about extensively, the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. If you have not seen the previous video, it began around March 28th and is going to go all the way until April 28th. So as uh, Jupiter comes closer and closer to Neptune, uh, we will have this energy of expansion at the same time this is uh, this is like the expansion of consciousness the expansion of truth this could also be expanding any emotions <laughs> that we have at this moment if you're confused it could expand your confusion and you could be even more confused or even because the energy of neptune that allows for dreams and for with jupiter it allows for big dreams so, so i i said it last week it's great times for big dreams it's great times to really see beyond see as far as you could dream and then your reality check is here with saturn mars you know that's your reality check so and the aries is like i got the idea i want to go i want to do it reality check do it slowly and then big dreams what are the dreams so with this particular conjunction, we want to allow surrender. The only way to, to find that inner truth and sense of divine connection to something that is bigger than my little self is surrender. Surrender to the currents of consciousness that are taking you somewhere, that are moving you. Without surrender, there could be immense confusion there could be immense um uh, yeah like jupiter will expand it no floods as well very possible with uh, jupiter and Neptune. if you're not aware of your own emotions and your inner sense of expansion or even overwhelm if you have for example overwhelming situations and you're not dealing with them and not seeing them and repressing them this could mean flood you know <laughs> flood in your house floods everywhere lands flooding you know so the best way to move this energy is to allow the the water to expand within you meaning your emotions allow them to expand allow them to be your dreams allow them to come allow the divine to come to you align to your highest best version against all odds and against everything that could seem difficult that it's not moving forward like it seems like there's a blockage here you want to move forward you want to have a more pleasant life more stability and yet it seems like it's not possible that something's blocking it that you don't just don't know how to do it trust that there's something more divine something bigger my two cents surrender that's the word and it's a good time for mystical experiences. Anybody with Pisces, uh, Cancer, or Scorpio, you might be feeling this energy as a beautiful, beautiful connection to something divine, something that's really guiding you. On the conversely, if you're in, in Virgo, um, Virgo, Sagittarius, or Gemini, this could feel like. Uh, maybe the, the dream is too big and you need to do a, a real reality check. So, so make sure to keep always grounded. I, 
I feel like I've been saying this week after week after week, but if you have not seen the previous videos, then I'm saying it again. So it's, it's you know, I keep saying it. Stay grounded, especially Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo. Stay grounded. This could be a beautiful transit that will, will make you trust intuition, big dreams. However, make sure it's not like a big illusion and that, that you're like overshooting a mark and then you end up completely disillusioned after the transit. So everything you're doing, make sure there is the real dose of realism, of, you know, give your Saturn uh, some credit and ask, ask of Saturn to, to give you, you know, give you things in a realistic way. So you're not just dreaming or delusional and then disillusioned or that you found a bigger truth and then, oh, this was maybe, you know, or somebody might also, uh, um, maybe you might feel that, that, that all this search for purpose and meaning is gone, you know, <laughs> because Jupiter, Neptune, it's like the ultimate purpose. You know, it's like when you find your truth, your purpose, a meaning for life, meaning, it's meaning, and then you're excited about it. So make sure that to make meaning of everything you do. I think that would be my, my more, like, my best advice would be, you know what? Make meaning of everything. Make meaning of every single moment. If you make every moment meaningful, you will see the divine in everything, in every moment. And if there's gratitude for what you do have in every moment, you won't be maybe regretting that there's not something bigger or like greener pastures elsewhere. Just love everything every day and give meaning and thanks every day. I think that's the best way to go out with this transit and, and really feel how beautiful and, and connected and compassionate and amazing this, this transit could feel. Uh, otherwise, you know, confusion could be the other outcome. And well, with Jupiter, it would be hard. Let's say Jupiter is, is it would be very hard for this to be a bad thing. You know, <laughs> like it, Jupiter never really is bad. But you see, when Jupiter was conjunct um, Pluto and Saturn, well, uh, we got a pandemic, you know, and we got expansion of, you know, regulations and expansion of a virus and you know it's like ah, it's, Jupiter expands what can I say so that's going to be that so connect here to your heart and then you see this little Neptune here my little baby it's going to be helping me not get too crazy with uh, dreams without anchors so anchors and balloons Make sure you get that right. So uh, Venus is interspicy. So on April 5th, and oh my God, thank you, thank you. This is going to feel so different. So if you can hang on, you know, for the first couple days of the week with difficulty, once Venus makes its ingress in Pisces, Venus will be at home in Pisces. It will be not necessarily at home, but it will be feeling it's 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 in its exaltation. She will be feeling happy. Venus is happy in Pisces. Finally, a sign that it's like ah, oh, it feels ah, oh, it's also a yin sign, is feminine. Um, and as Venus comes closer and closer to Jupiter and Neptune throughout the month, it can bring grace, it can bring beauty, it can bring feelings of, of flow and music is great with this, art, poetry, you know, like all of these beautiful things um, that Venus brings in Pisces is also this divine connection to the magical realms, imagination, you know, with the Jupiter, Neptune, and, and Venus kind of in Pisces, there's this opening for, for creativity, immense creativity and beauty from the other realms. Ride your unicorn while Venus is there. Uh, possibility of finding also soul connections. 
you know, with Venus in Pisces, there's this kind of, it's, it's, it's about the soul and the, and the divine, as divine love, you know, divine beauty. So again, if we can find the divine in everything and can write it the first few days without getting too frustrated because Mars Saturn can bring a lot of frustration because precisely it's like, I want to do something, it's not happening. <laughs> so don't push it. And when now Venus is finally far from these two guys and then, or I mean, guys, why do I call them guys? <laughs> they could be girls too. <laughs> uh, they're just far from Mars Saturn. Uh, Venus being far from Mars Saturn now, it seems like uh, it's getting easier. Maybe we'll, we'll find more joy and pleasure that we could have maybe lost in the past week. Um, so that's that. And as we, uh, as I like to show always this image of Pisces because the more planets we have in Pisces, the more the energy will go there. It's the energy of dissolution. It's the energy of somehow endings of things so new things can begin. So as things are, are growing with Aries, some things are ending, but these endings is just, is, is endings through dissolution. So when we dissolve, we, we can see the vast possibilities of everything again. Because that's the miracle of Pisces. It's like, who says something's not possible? Everything is possible. Everything. It's, it's the quantum existence of consciousness. Consciousness is infinite. So if, if we can trust infinite consciousness and that we can create anything we want, anything, and we can trust and even ask for help, there is, there are beings and energies all around us that we can also say, please guide me, help me. Where are you? These energies will be there with you. And you can call them your higher self. You can call them angels. You can call them ascended masters, light family, aliens. I, I don't know. We can call them whatever you want. Consciousness, energy, you know, intelligence, God. <laughs> I was telling you everything you could connect to whatever resonates with you that can give you that sense of peace and connectedness to something that is grander, that has your back always, no matter how difficult life may seem, there is always this here in the middle of your chest. There is a door and that door is always accessible. That door is your heart. You place your hands on your heart, you breathe deep, and you know, you know, all is well. You know, all is well. All is well. Like that movie, The Three Idiots. Watch that movie. All is well. You know, <laughs> you'll see. Trust. And that will carry you through these transits, through these frustrations of mass, Mars Saturn. The frustrations can be more easily, you know, um, understood and, and held if you're if you if you trust so keep that you know <laughs> pray <laughs> prayer and so uh, towards the end of the week we're coming like uh, april 6th to 10th we're going to have a, a sextile from mars to saturn which uh the Mer mercury mars saturn so mars saturn and mercury will have a sextile which um it allows for Again, for mental pursuits, like if you have for focused energy, focused mental energy, again, Saturn helps to focus as well, right? That's the good thing about Saturn. If you need to, for example, to, to study something or to look into something or to go deep within something, especially with, the, with this uh, Aries, there's like um, the impulsive nature of Aries, but there's also the newness and maybe there is like, a capacity to see clearly, you know, with the with the sun and, and Mercury that we have kind of come out of that, slowly coming out of that conjunction, seeing clearly and and having a good mental focus. So there is an oppor opportunity to to bring in like to to sharpen a little bit, you know, sh sharpen your focus. Um, with Mars Saturn and this is a sextile so Mercury can give some like mental energy to any any pursuit pursuit that you're something that you're pursuing 
you know, to have some clarity and to, you know, to put your ideas in bullet points a little bit. That's a very uh, American Aries or kind of a Mercury Mars thing. It's like a bullet point kind of, you know, it's not like poetic and crazy. It's like, it's, it's, it's very like, this is what I need. This is what I need to the point, straight to the point, And I need to focus on this. So great for tasks that require some focus. I would say it's a, it's a good energy for that. And uh, yeah, so the sextile is Mercury, it's a Mars Mercury sextile to Saturn, to this conjunction that's still in the air. And finally, April 9th to 11th. And this is where things can get a little bit again. We've had these squares come up a few times in the near past. Um, and um, anytime Mercury is squaring Pluto, we can go to dark places, to shadow places. And um, the, it could be just like raw talk, you know, <laughs> kind of like raw. Uh, it could even be some kind of, you know, talking about the shadow or having, you know, like, um, yeah, like, like when we raw talk, how can I put that? Like, it's not very gracious, you know, <laughs> having a Mercury squaring to Pluto is like, you know, there, there might be the sense that 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 we can it's 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 not graceful <laughs> what can i say it's, it's it's everything but graceful our communication can get a little bit like you know raunchy or a little bit like kind of direct and and not tactful at all you know mars uh, mercury in aries kind of straight to the point a little bit like mm, squaring uh Squaring Pluto, communication might get a little bit like, eh, you know. Um, so mind your words. I would say if you feel that there's something you want to talk about that's really deeply entrenched in you and, and you need to talk about something that's coming up for you, which is the positive side of this, even though this is a square, it's like, okay, uh, there are things coming to the surface. Anytime we have Mercury and Pluto, there's, there's dirt that we're seeing into dirt. We're looking into deeper parts of whatever. It could be also dirt coming from, again, we have uh, revelations around and maybe findings in the government or you know, anything that is Capricornian in nature, you know, digging more dirt from, um, from powerful, you know, from powerful people, or, or if you are in power, you know, like. Uh, this could be forceful communication as well a little bit, you know, like not easy. So this is not a good transit if you need to have, it's not good if you need to have really deep conversations, but if you do need to have a deep conversation, which is great for bringing up all the shadow, make sure to, to use a little bit of tact, maybe some, you know, instead of like blurting out whatever comes out of your mouth take a deep breath before blurting out something that you know can be nasty because this is nasty talk you know or nasty communication it could be right so before blurting out something like that uh you know just take a deep breath and see how could you convey something important in the most graceful manner or postpone the talk for when it, it, there is a, a more graceful environment to to have a discussion so i yeah it could be prone to conflict you know with pluto and and you know difficult conversations as well it's not all bad you know when we can look into the shadow of of, of our own obsessions and uh, then we can also work through many things we can work through you know how we're communicating and um also discover things from the way we think you know again our obsessions Pluto can be very obsessive and what we're attached to Mercury can also bring that to the awareness uh, so those are my two cents on all of this um astrology for this week and um yeah please feel free to leave any comments if anything's been happening these past weeks again with relationships things 
feeling difficult with the Saturn and things not moving forward. And what kind of insights you get on, on the Pisces side, if you're you know, in the Pisces area of your chart, are there any new things coming up for you? Uh, and how are you navigating this, these transits? These are not necessarily very easy. However, it will be getting easier as, as more things go into Pisces, things might, once Mars moves into Pisces, things might start feeling much more lighter and easier. So just hang on this next week. Patience. That's the word that comes to me, patience. Patience and grace. So, okay, this is this. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Um, we are also on Meetup, on Instagram, on Facebook. You can find our events. We have an Astro Chat coming up on April the 10th, where we're going to talk about Chiron. Precisely anybody is invited. Um, um, if you join our Facebook group, group or and Meetup group, you will get uh, all the information um, from our events, and it's, it's free. We discuss things and um, we sometimes look at charts or your charts, we answer questions. It's, it's, a, it's a very nice discussion. Um, so please feel free, free to check that out. Also, if you want a reading, check the details in the description box. If you want a reading with myself, if you're going through some difficulty, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and, and see what uh, we can do for you. Uh, okay, that's that. and. Um, yeah, I think I said everything. So blessings and gone for this week. Sending you so much love and I'll see you next week with more info.